we like to call our kind of brand uh, storytelling and ambush marketing. Okay. So recently uh, we were trying to promote Hotel St. Louis' Easter brunch. Okay. And so I dressed up in an Easter costume and went around <laughs> to media stations. Nice. Uh, it was so fun, but it's just nice because our clients trust us to do kind of these crazy chaotic things. Sure. Welcome to the Bourbon Friday Show, where every Friday we take a short break, try a new bourbon, meet somebody awesome from the St. Louis startup scene. I'm your host, Nick Niehaus, and I am talking to Lindsay Von Quatham, who is the CEO and founder of City Block. Yeah. So, Lindsay, thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. This yeah, is so of fun. Of course, good, good. Well, let's start off, uh, just tell us a little bit about City Block. Yeah, so City Block is almost two years old. Oh, nice. It's crazy. We are actually a startup that's housed here in Cobo. Okay, yeah, I think you're just down the hall, you're yeah, saying, Yeah, down right? the hall, yeah. our faces are on the door. Um, but we specialize in digital marketing and storytelling. Okay. Uh, so I, before I started City Blocks, I worked for Downtown SLA. Okay. And downtown, I realized there were so many great stories going untold because people didn't have the means or the manpower or the time to do so. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's actually kind of a story that started from um, an unfortunate situation to now. Um, I was okay. laid off from Downtown STL mm. um, in a bunch of changeover. And felt it felt like the worst day. Yeah, you know, uh, they outsourced marketing to an agency, which was a very smart move. But for me personally, it felt like the worst day. Yeah. Um, but it turned into the best thing that ever could happen because I ended up having enough time and ability to start City Blocks. Hmm. And it's it's been quite a ride. Yeah. Um, we're about two years old now because I founded it in August of 2017. Okay. And the warm welcome we've received from companies and partners that have wanted to work with us has just been astounding, and I'm forever grateful. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, yeah. congrats on getting to Thank almost you. the two-year mark. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I think you said you're bringing on a, a second employee. So, um, I it, at our one-year mark, uh -huh. I hired my first employee, yeah. and then we just hired our third. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of growth in two years. So. I know. Um, I every day I, I'm like, I can't believe it's still working. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But it is, and it's because we have so many good clients we work with sure. uh, who challenge us and expect the most because they deserve the most. Uh -huh. um, and so it's constantly getting us to improve and find new means of um, social marketing. Mm. And we like to call our kind of brand uh, storytelling and ambush marketing. Okay. So. Recently, uh, we were trying to promote Hotel St. Louis' Easter brunch. Okay. And so I dressed up in an Easter costume and went around <laughs> to media stations. Nice. Uh, it was so fun, but it's just nice because our clients trust us to do kind of these crazy, chaotic things. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you, you started out talking about storytelling, you know, yeah. especially on social. Um, and I, what I think is interesting is, you know, we've had these platforms for so many years now. Mm -hmm. Companies have had profiles for a decade in a lot of cases, yeah. right? Why do you think a lot of companies are still struggling to kind of tell these stories using those tools? I think sometimes it can feel a little bit bigger than it actually is. Okay. Um, I think social media feels like it's been around forever, but for a lot of companies, it feels scary and large and like they don't have time to do it. Yeah. Because uh, if you don't do it right, it almost feels like you shouldn't do it at all. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle. Um, so that's where we like to come in and take that weight off people's plate. Mm -hmm. And I always call us, we are, we're true like social executors. Okay. Uh, you know, we're not killing people, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> we are truly coming in and implementing social practices uh -huh. when companies should be, if it's a restaurant, they're cooking. If it's a nonprofit, they are, they have their feet on the street and they're pounding the pavement trying to get fundraising. We are the ones with them socially marketing their business. Gotcha. And I think that's what has made it work. But also, like, that's what scares people is they mm -hmm. don't have the manpower to do that. Gotcha. Okay. So is this, you know, you, you talked about, you know, being laid off because they were hiring an outside agency yep. and then obviously you started an agency, right? Which yeah. is awesome. So do you think that is that kind of the best route for a lot of these smaller businesses? You know, should they be, because I, I you know we talked to a lot of small businesses too, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have a social media person, right? Which right. is generally not a full-time position. And it's like, somebody that has, you know, a couple thousand followers on Instagram, so yeah. they must be good at it kind of thing, uh -huh. right? Or they just graduated college, so they've been doing social media yeah. to get it. Sure. Yeah. So do you think it's best for these, like, let's say small businesses, talking about restaurants, things like that, to outsource all of this? And, and if so, 
Um, how do you go about making sure that you understand their business well enough to tell those stories? Yeah, so uh, in addition to being storytellers, I like to call us brand journalists. Okay. Because we come in and truly try to identify and um, really empathize with the, with the business's core values, what drives them, what's most important. And um, I don't. Th I think if they hire an agency and if they actually do that well and actually get to know the company, that's when it can work. Okay. But sometimes you can outsource, and if you don't have a big budget for it, a, a company might take you on just thinking that it's kind of another drop in their bucket. Sure. Um, so it's really finding that is it not is a small business right for you, is an agency right for you, or could you find an intern that's really savvy and mm -hmm. have them do it? I think it depends on the business, okay. but our specialty has really been, we work with businesses of all sizes. Uh, one of our biggest is Hotel St. Louis uh -huh. over at uh, 7th and Olive. And for us it works because they have, um, a, they have a director of marketing, a salesperson, a general manager, chefs. Uh, and you know front desk people sure but no one's dedicated for social so if they were gonna do it it's like it's the thing that they do last sure so, it always falls off the list right yeah so <clears throat> you know I think it could, I think any kind of secular uh, sector of so and I think any sector of like an agency or a small business could work for anybody okay. you just have to have to find the right fit for you Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, so let's talk about what's working right now. Yeah. Obviously, right? Social media is always changing. Different kinds of posts are popular at times than others. Uh, what are you finding in terms of the kind of content that you're putting out for these companies? What, what's working well? I think, the th I think the type of content that is going to sustain, the that's going to last the test of time, really is human forward content. Okay. I think that's, you know, rather than having a brand talking to you, people want human endorsements. Yeah. They want to feel like they know who they're talking to. Uh, so it's little touches, even like sending a Facebook message to a disgruntled customer and sending it as the brand, but signing it as yourself. Ah, uh, okay. So they know they're talking to a human and not a bot. Um, and also just using human testimonials, uh, little tiny touches like showing our hand in a post so they know hmm. someone's eating this and it's not a taco that's going on eating. You know? Gotcha. Okay. Um, but I think human board is really the thing that's going to last. Okay. So for a company, I mean, so restaurants, that's an example, you know, you can have your hands or people in yeah. the, the images in that case, right? And but, I, I mean, selfishly, I get to eat the taco. Yeah, there so, you go. Well, that's yeah. a nice perk. Yeah, yeah that works yeah. out. Um, what, are, what are other kinds of companies, or other businesses? How can they add more of that kind of human element uh, yeah. to their posting? Um, one of our clients that's done this really well is Trailnet. Okay. And uh, Trailnet is a biking and walking advocacy group. Uh -huh. For them, they have May is their May is uh, their membership month. Okay. So they're trying to boost up their membership, which helps them create safer streets through monetary uh, monetary improvements. Okay. And something that's worked really well for them is running a campaign called Members Matter Because. Uh, so it's a nonprofit, and they're telling their story through the people it's impacted. Yeah. So um, someone who maybe had a pothole outside of their house and they fell in it, or they popped their tire yeah, or nice. um, they didn't have a stop sign outside of their house, but Trailnet has advocated for the improvement. Uh -huh. And it's telling that story through people. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, mean, so, we, I was actually having a conversation earlier today about the idea of you know, using the hero's journey as kind of a structure yeah. for storytelling, yeah, that's but cool. not not positioning your business as the hero, but the customer is the hero, you know, and you're kind yeah. of the advisor to them and you're helping them through their journey. So yeah. it sounds like that, that tends to work well. Right? Mm -hmm. um, well, let's talk about some kind of basic rules then, right? So okay. for posting, um, I guess let, let's talk first about, you know, frequency. That's a big question I think people have when it comes to social media is like, yeah. Yeah, people always ask us, how much is too much? When am I right. doing too many videos? So, and I'm like, you're not going to hit that ceiling probably anytime soon, so, considering what you're doing so yeah, far. Yeah, unless right? you're posting seven videos a day, then yeah. we have a problem. Yeah, yeah. So um, what, what kind of rules do you, do you advise in that sense? Yeah, so we really kind of cater the rules to the client. Okay. Uh, I say for restaurants, every day makes sense. Sure. Because with a restaurant, you have stories of staff. You have stories of customers, food, drink, the space. Um, the ambience, there's so many, the stories are really boundless. Sure. And, uh, so for them, it's every day. Okay. I think, and people on the weekends, the things they're looking for on social are like, where am I going to eat today? Where's my brunch? Mm -hmm. Where's my hangover mimosa? You sure. Know? Um, but then during the week, for our, most of our nonprofits and other clients, we kind of steady in that Monday through Friday realm okay. of posting every day, Monday through Friday. Um, and that's where we've kind of seen the biggest bang for our buck is giving people the weekends to 
not have to focus on the marketing give hmm. them, during the week focusing then. If there's a big event, obviously we post. Sure. But really kind of studying in that Monday through Friday. Gotcha. And I think, you know, daily is important because, you know, we have a few clients that wanted to post once a week. And I personally don't think that's enough. Yeah. Because if you have a customer who is super enticed by your burrito, yeah. they go to your page and they haven't seen you post for seven days, they're wondering why. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's, you almost, you automatically almost have this adverse effect where they're like, I don't know if I trust you because you just have this one photo. Does the rest of the stuff yeah. match? Gotcha. Okay. So it's about transparency in, in a certain yeah, sense, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, in a lot of ways it's kind of your digital storefront, right? And it's like yeah. if you don't ever put anything there, it looks like you went out of business, right? Totally. It doesn't take long either, you know? No. I mean, yeah, it could be a week or two and it's like, okay, what, yeah. did they all die? Well, like, what happened to exactly. them? Exactly. <laughs> and there's so many restaurants yeah. and there's so many businesses in St. Louis that people have options. Okay, yeah. And so it's making sure that if you are their option in that moment, that you're their only option. So, yeah. like, give them as many reasons to come to you as possible. Mm-hmm. And that is maybe through a great photo, witty copy, or making your mouth water by reading that the burrito is filled with cheese, rice, and beans, and topped with queso. Yeah. Um, so it's like also telling the story through the photo and the caption. Okay. Um, and it's just getting people hooked with that one, you know, get them hooked, and then give them more reasons to keep getting hooked by going to your page. Gotcha. Okay. And one thing I think a lot of people are wondering about lately is as, you know, the organic reach, especially mm-hmm. on business pages, has really dropped over time. That's terrible. You know, are, are you seeing clients, you know, needing to put money into promoting some of these posts? Or what, what do you recommend there in terms of ad spend? So we, we really try not to have any clients um, skip boosting entirely. Okay. Sure. Uh, even if you spend as little as two bucks a day to um, focus on like campaigns, so getting uh-huh. likes for your page. Uh, that's meaningful. Okay. But we really, I don't think we have any clients right now that aren't spending anything, hmm. even if it's just a little bit a month. Because with that algorithm, you can target to people. And once someone has liked your post, if they didn't like your page before, you can invite them to like the page. Yeah. And there's all these free things that you can do. Mm-hmm. But uh, right now, we really are recommending all of our clients spend a little bit of advertising dollars. Yeah, and it's pretty affordable at this point, too, right? We always say, and Nicole, who, who I talked about earlier, um, she calls social media modern advertising, mm-hmm. and it's true. You know, sure. it's the cheapest way to get the biggest bang for your buck. And, um, you know, you can spend a ton on paper ads and TV ads, but how many times are they really seeing it? Mm-hmm. Um, but on social, people are scrolling in bed at 9 p.m. before they close yeah. their eyes. You want to be the last thing they see. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's there constantly. You yeah. wake up and go to bed in the middle, right? Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about kind of what we are looking at in the future of social media a little bit because, uh, you know, Facebook obviously recently announced some pretty significant changes, platform redesign, yeah. um, a big shift towards privacy and kind yep. of kind of more intimate groups and communities. Yeah. Um, how do you see that kind of playing out affecting businesses? So I think we kind of have to live in it and see what it does first before sure. you can really... Um, because I, I hate to be wrong, so I don't want to say anything yeah. and look back and be wrong. But you say all of it, and then right. you can cut the exactly. part out later and, that and was this right. And recorded, you know? <laughs> so I could look back and be wrong. Um, but I really think that if people continue to sustain human-forward content, I think that's the thing that um, humans show transparency. They show honesty. Um, also, like if you constantly have human-forward content, it's uh, content. It's uh, it shows like formality, like uniformity too sure and um so i think that's where while we kind of go through the webs and shows of social and the changing fields i think if we can continue being human forward mm-hmm. the rest will play out gotcha yeah makes sense right so, and kind maybe in a month i'll have a different answer but for now i don't want to be wrong well that that's, one sounds pretty safe i feel like that's a good that's a good guess yeah i like yeah. it um, well, before we uh, move on to the next segment, one, one last question I want to kind of go over with you here is which platform? That's a big question all the time, oh, right? So where, where are you seeing, and it's probably going to vary depending on the business, obviously, yeah. but um, let's maybe talk about restaurants in particular. Where are you seeing the best kind of impact for them? So for restaurants, I, I don't really see much value in Twitter. Okay. Twitter is like a news source um, in my mind. Sure. Um, I think Facebook and Instagram is where really where people are getting the biggest bang right now. Okay. Um, if you spend the money, Facebook is huge. Yeah. But oh, Instagram, yeah. it's turning into this place where people can show, can like really highlight their favorite photos of their product. Uh-huh. Um, so I think if people invest in aesthetically pleasing photos and videos, 
Instagram is probably your best bet. Okay. But you have to really focus on the aesthetic. And it's not just focusing on the photo at hand. It's also focusing on how it fits in with the rest of your feet. Yeah. If you look at your wall, um, you don't want to have, it's like, you don't want to have this kind of underlying tone of green and then yellow and then it goes to blue. Uh Maybe you just like pick a tone and kind of live in that. Okay. Um, And also making sure that if you're trying to tell a story, how does that story weave throughout all of your photos? Wow, okay. Um, so that's kind of where I focus is on the aesthetic. Gotcha. And uh, sometimes I'll post something on Facebook and then go to use the same photo on Instagram. And I'm like, oh no, we have to find a new it's one. It's not going to work. It just doesn't fit. Huh, interesting. Okay. That's, the only pay- that's the only platform where you can actually look at everything as a whole. Yeah, it kind of makes one big image out of all the individual yeah. images, right? Yeah, that's that's tricky. That takes it some is. real some real practice, but it's right? Really fun. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, one final question, actually. I thought that was the last one, but liar. I got one more, which You're is a liar. A, well, it's a good one. You're going <laughs> to like this one. Um, if only wants to hire you, you know, if they oh, want to get in touch, yeah. How do how do they go about That's doing that? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, so we are. Um, I'm the founder of City Block Communications. Okay. You can find us on Facebook at City Block STL, or our website is CityBlockSTL.com. Okay. And you can email Lin- you can email me at Lindsay at CityBlockSTL.com. Everything is City Block STL. Easy enough. Yeah, and we like love it. you know we. As I mentioned, we just hired our third employee, and you know we are work we are hungry to continue working with companies and people in St. Louis that are doing good work because that's really our focus area. Okay. So if you feel like you have a good story, I'd love to hear from you. All right. Very cool. Well, we got just a couple minutes left in the show, so okay. we're going to invite Eric on. And Eric Perfect. is he's the founder of the event, and he's uh, we got a special party going on. We tonight. do. Woo-hoo. So uh, why don't you tell us about that and what we're drinking, too. So uh, this weekend is Derby weekend. Yeah. Right? So Kentucky Derby is tomorrow. Kentucky Oaks is tonight. So Bourbon Friday, we always have... Well, not always, now twice. That's uh, always. I think <laughs> always. I think yeah, it's always, You're right? effectively an always now. Always. Uh, we have a little party to celebrate that weekend. And, you know, that's a big bourbon, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all goes together. Let's celebrate that. Yeah. Uh, it's a good reason just to have a li- do a little bit extra mm-hmm. for everybody here. So the bourbon actually relates to Kentucky Derby. It's called Calumet Farm. Mm-hmm. Calumet Farm farm is the winningest thoroughbred farm uh, for the Kentucky Derby. I believe they have eight winners and two triple crown winners. The other reason I brought this on is the name of this bourbon, entirely marketing. Really? <laughs> this, they, they have named it after this farm yeah. and it actually doesn't have anything to do with the thoroughbred farm. So yeah. this oh. is, because we're all in marketing, we yeah. kind of even like, yeah. We know how important a name is, yeah. right? And, and so they have wanted to relate uh, that bourbon to Kentucky. And it is a Kentucky bourbon, but it is a source bourbon. But they want to put a big name on it. Yeah. Same thing like Jefferson's Reserve, if you've seen that. It has nothing to do with Thomas yeah. Jefferson at all. Yeah. I think there's right. quite a few of those names. Right? Like <laughs> Elijah Craig. And all that <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Cool. All right. Well, uh, let's. Awesome. So, Eric, as always, thank you for all that. Lindsay, thank you for joining us thank today. You. I really so appreciate fun. it. Yeah, good. Glad to hear that. Thank you for the bourbon, too. Oh, well, that's, that's all Eric right <laughs> thank there. You. You know? yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I like this one. It is good stuff. Um, for those of you tuning in, you know, thank you for joining us uh, every Friday here at 4 30. We do the Bourbon Friday show. This one was a little bit late. We apologize for that. Um, but hopefully you're able to catch it. Please join us again next Friday at 4.30. I want to thank a few people. Uh, Kovo, obviously, for hosting us every week. EQ for helping us stream the show. And, of course, Vanessa Lobo, my business partner at Connect Marketing, who always takes care of all the hard stuff behind the scenes for us, which we greatly appreciate. We love so, Vanessa. Yes, thank you for tuning in. And please join us again next week. We'll see you at 4.30 on Friday. Hey, thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this episode. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. To stay up to date... Follow us on social. We are at Bourbon Fridays on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. See you next time.